This is Retirement Roadmap Radio with Mark Fricks from Master Plan Retirement Consultants. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful solutions to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now, here is Retirement Roadmap Radio with your host, Mark Fricks. Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Retirement Roadmap Radio with me, Mark Fricks, your host. Uh, And joining us today, as always, is Mr. Tony Shore, and uh, we have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about something that is very practical and very important, but yet often overlooked, and that is protecting the surviving spouse. In other words, what happens uh, when the first spouse passes away and leaves the other one behind, which is typically the female. Uh, So uh, I think it's going to be a great uh, subject. I think it's going to be really helpful. And uh, Tony, um, need to bring you in here and see um, see how you're doing, my friend. Well, I am doing great, Mark. Great to be here with you. I've had a good week. You know, considering everything that's going on out there, my family and I have been doing uh, really well. I love this time of year, honestly, and I just uh, yeah. have been getting a lot done out in the yard and around the house, you know, uh, keeping busy. How about you? What have you been up to? We've been working. Uh, we have been so busy with, uh, you know, with the, with the COVID uh, continuing to thrive. Um, people still, you know, getting transferred or losing their jobs, wanting to know what to do with old 401ks. Um, and sometimes I think it's just the fact they're home and they're, they're, they're thinking about all the things they need to do. And they, they've already got the house fixed up. They did that in the first three months of COVID. And now they're like, okay, what else in my life do I need to fix and so they start thinking about their finances and their retirement and, and you know, their wills and trust and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and so it's just been and, and, and unrest. You know, it's kind of like a doctor. You know, you don't typically go to the doctor a whole lot unless you feel bad. I think right now a lot of people are feeling bad financially or feeling, you know, worried. And so just really, really busy. We're um, as busy as we've ever been. And, and I love it. And I, I, I thank the good Lord that we are and, and that we're able to help people. But, um, yeah. you know, I'm working weekends and, and late and, and, you know, trying to, what, what do you say, uh, making hay while the sun shines, I believe. is. The, you got to make hay while the, the sun <laughs> shines. <laughs> That's you right. got to make hay while the sun shines. I heard that over and over. Uh, yeah, growing yeah. up so that's what we're doing we're making hay so good and well it's not to stay out for a while longer <laughs> well i'm sure it will in fact <laughs> i, I want to i want to throw something out there uh to a lot of our radio listeners or podcast listeners uh you're now filming each episode of the show so they can say yep. you know i have the perfect face for radio so they we, they don't let me on the <laughs> camera i'm not on the camera but uh people can see you doing the show they can watch it now uh, I love the fact that you're offering the show in video format now as well, right? Absolutely. I, we have the cameras going and, and uh, you know, three mar- uh, three makeup artists here. It takes a while. You know, we have uh, <laughs> a hairstylist. I have someone that picks out my clothes. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, we have a staff of that's about true. 20 here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. But anyway, but yeah, we're, we're actually posting it on YouTube. Uh, so, uh, you can probably, uh, you know, I, I've got to find out how it's being posted. Uh, you can try my name, Mark Fricks, F R I C K S or master plan retirement. I, I imagine it's under master plan retirement, uh, but just do, uh, we have our own channel there now. And, mm-hmm. and so just do a search there. We've got one or two shows up and we're going to start set, uh, putting all the new shows up there and you know tony i think what the other cool thing would be is to take the old shows and let me lip sync them on video and (laughs) and get all those caught up too (laughs) i don't know about that (laughs) yeah it would be like doing a cartoon right oh it'd be like those old uh japanese or chinese films where the japanese old films where they dub it in english or whatever and it's way off you know (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, the dubbed films that were way off the yeah. lip syncing. Uh, no, that's great. Uh, but today on the show, what are we talking about? Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, coming in, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, how to protect the surviving spouse. Mm. Um, and so we, we want to kind of uh, talk about before and after. Um, you know, it's what do you do before, you know, somebody passes away? I say early or prematurely. I don't know what that really means to be honest with you i mean uh i've lost loved ones in their late 80s that i thought was premature but um, well, yeah 
Yeah. Almost always, you have one pass away before the other. Yeah. And so almost usually, always you have one left. It's and, the, and a lot of times it's uh, women t- uh, live longer, typically, not always, but a lot of times the women live longer. Yeah. And everybody's living longer and longer nowadays, though, right? I mean, yeah. with longevity increasing. Yeah, I've, I've got some stats here. 72% chance that one part of a couple will live to 85 almost a 50 percent chance that one of them will live to uh to 90 and almost a 20 percent chance one will live to 95 um so yeah th- there's definitely a problem there and, and and so we want to cover that and i you know tony me i'm all about strategies to um to mitigate the risk beforehand you know close the door before the cow gets out of the barn so to speak as right. opposed to afterwards so <laughs> yeah. to bring up another good farming yeah. term there but um <laughs> that, uh, you've got them all yes. i like it yeah hey well, I, I, I just need to mention something there, there let me mention something real quick um if you're listening and you can jot something down this is just for fun by the way there is a um uh, alan king who is a com- uh, was a comedian in the 60s oh and 70s. yeah i remember alan king yeah a L A N. He was called the King of Comedy, Alan King. Yep. Google him and Google the word Alan King survived by. It is the funniest seven minute seven minutes of comedy I've it's ever classic. heard. You know I love yeah. comedy and it, yep. and even do some comedy by myself. And 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 yes. Have you heard that particular one? Yep. Oh yeah. So that's by, famous. It, that's a it's about that's one yeah. of the classics. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all about, you know, the husband passing away first. He actually reads obituaries that people have sent him. And so, anyway, if you just need a good laugh, um, and this year we need a good laugh, then yeah. that would be, I think, a, a good place to go. So, anyway, so not not to get too far off subject, but actually that's on subject. So yeah. So it's probably okay. Yeah, well, Alan King so anyway, is considered yeah. one of the, yeah, he's one of the comedy legends that influenced so many other comics, you know, like uh, – Yep. from Jerry yeah, he, he was one of the first ones to do situational type yeah exactly yep. taking yep. ordinary things in life and and, and and making them funny so that's uh, good stuff yeah so. yeah that's awesome so now the surviving spouse and, and uh, in a lot of cases it's 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 the wife but not always um, mm-hmm. you know we always hear that women outlive their husbands and I, I've heard the joke uh, why uh, why do uh, why do husbands die first because they want to is the, that's the old joke. That's, that's an old joke, but we're not gonna. Uh. Yeah. Well, and to go and to go along with that, I mean, when I, whenever I'm sitting down with a prospect or a client that is a single woman, um, and even when they're married, I'll you know we'll say this. I'll say uh, you know typically the man dies first, and and uh, you know if the if the if the woman dies first, the man uh, almost always gets married within 18 months. I mean, even our oh. family, we saw it happen. But the woman usually it never gets married. It's not because they don't. It's not because they can't. It's because this is what they tell me. I've been told this many times. I'm not going to train another one. Ah. So, <laughs> and I think that's probably very true. I think that's you know, probably so. really true. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, let's, you know, it's good to have some levity about this. But yeah, we do. Uh, we do encounter encounter this a good bit, and and we actually um, uh, this year. We have lost uh, three clients uh, oh. passing away. None of them COVID related. Um, wow. no, normally, it's one every two or three years, but we've had three this year. And so, um, you know, as our clientele ages, it's probably going to happen more and more. But we we make sure, and we even go back and audit and make sure we're prepared just in case. And so, the way we kind of look at it, Tony, is this: is is when we take on a new client, we are we are looking at what can go wrong. And, and you know that we run reports, you know, what if taxes go up? How would that affect you? What if inflation? What if we have, you know, a, another severe bear market, which we will. We have one every so many years. But how does that affect and how do we protect that? How do we either mitigate the risk, cover the risk, ignore the risk? You know, there's different ways to approach each item. One of the big ones uh, is losing a spouse, you know, and, and so we want to make sure we're prepared for that. Well, yeah, and that's it's a tough topic. Nobody wants to think about this. And but it is something that eventually uh, you or your spouse will pass and you don't want to leave your loved one or your spouse in a bad situation. So there are a lot of things that you have to take care of uh, before the loss of a spouse. What are some ways uh, that uh, people or that you help people or that we can 
uh, prepare for the loss of a spouse? Well, yeah, that's a great question. I think, first of all, you want to make sure that everything uh, financially and uh, estate document-wise is in order. And what I mean by that is, is uh, let's take the financial stuff first. A lot of times, uh, not always, and it's changing, but, you know, the older uh, generation, very many times the husband handled everything. Uh, but even if it's the wife handling everything financially, the other party needs to know where everything is. You know, where's the 401k? Where's the IRA? Where, where's the key to the safety deposit box? What are the passwords to all the you know accounts we can get to online. So we start with organization. We create a financial statement with ownership and, and the way this is taxed and, and who's the beneficiaries. Make sure we, we do a beneficiary audit to make sure that's lined up correctly. You know, there's the old story of, of the man that, that worked for Lockheed for, you know, for 40 years. Well, about 10 years after he started there, he got a divorce and, and remarried a few years later. Never thought to change the beneficiary on his 401k passed away. His ex-wife of 25 years ago inherited, oh, half a million dollars or so. Um, The current wife, I think she probably, instead of burying him, probably put him down the well or something. I don't know. Oh, no. uh, Again, you have to, you know, so, so that's what, that's what we start with. Where, where is everything? Are the beneficiaries lined up? And then, we start taking a look at the estate planning documents. You know, is, is the will in, in place properly? Uh, is it up to date? It, you know, so many people come in here, they either don't have a will, and these are people that are 60 years old, give or take, uh, or if they have one, it's from when the kids were born, you know, and, and so the language is wrong. Uh, the executor they had named is dead, <laughs> you know, and the backup one's dead too. And so we want to make sure that, that these are updated, that the, the powers of attorney, the health care directives, uh, the living will, uh, and, and if it's appropriate, a trust. And so those early in the process, those are items that we want to uh, get updated, make sure they're correct. We keep a copy. Uh, our attorneys keep a copy. And then, of course, the client keeps a copy to make sure, again, they, it survives. We had somebody recently uh, that came to us from another advisor and, and probably not a retirement planner, probably just a broker or an advisor or whatever. Uh, and he had never taken the time to look or update their wills. And they came to us. And before we could get started with them, uh, the husband passed away. Uh, no will. Oh, no. So it's been a mess. It's been a mess. And we're trying to work through it with them. But, uh, you know, just a simple will would have helped. Uh, yeah. So so we really want to make sure that that's in line. So that's kind of step one is 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 uh, knowing where things are and making sure your documents are lined up. Right. And make a list of uh, things and valuables and assets and passwords. So uh, get those lists made and find out where the documents are. And I've heard, you know, recently um, there's been a lot of celebrities that have passed and uh, like when Aretha Franklin passed, they said, oh, she had a will. As she told everyone she had a will. No one knew where it was. They couldn't find it. So, oh, wow. you know, wow. I, I mean, these things, uh, it's crazy when you hear about these things, but it happens like you've seen it happen. And, you know, you told the story. But uh, I want to point out, too, just for our listeners, and you've told me this before, uh, even if you have a will, that beneficiary designation takes precedent over what you say in the will. Right? That's right. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah. You can you can say whatever you want to in the will, but if you have a beneficiary designation on an account, which you would on an IRA, a four hundred one k, a life insurance policy, things like that, that does take precedence. So you want to make sure they're lined up. You know, is that right. really what you want to happen? So what's yep. the next step? What's something else we can do to prepare? Well, then we start thinking about um, where does uh, the the death of a spouse leave the spouse financially? Mm. Um, and, you know, so a lot of people don't think about this. You know, uh, this you know, let's take Social Security first. So we know that in almost every case, that if um, a spouse passes away, the remaining spouse gets the larger of the two Social Security payments, but they lose the smaller one. So if the husband's getting 2500 a month and the wife's getting 1500 she starts getting the twenty five if he passes away, but that $1,500 a month is gone. That's $18,000 a year, gone, just like that. And, you know, expenses don't necessarily drop when you lose, you know, part of a couple. Utilities, do you burn much less electricity? 
You might eat a little bit less food, but you know, is that significant? Is that eighteen thousand dollars worth a year? Probably not. Um, you know, things mortgage stays the same. Um, you know, car payments still there. Maybe you get rid of a car, but again, it's not going to change that much. And and then if you look at some other income sources, so let's let's think about pensions. Um, you know, pensions have uh, the option of a um, survivorship. But uh, many pensions, the highest, especially federal government, you know, we work with federal workers as well, and the government pension, the highest survivor that you can get is 50%. So if your pension's, you know, $3,000 a month, uh, that's another $18,000 a year that the survivor would receive. Now you're up to $36,000 a year less in income. Uh, so, um, you know, how do we plan to replace that? You know, is it a life insurance situation? Is it a, uh, um, you know, making sure we have enough in assets? Is it a, uh, you know, we like to talk about buckets. Is it a bucket over here on the side that's just left alone growing that if some, you know, whoever passes away first, the other one has access to it. Um, and then, you know, the biggest danger is this, Tony, if, um, you know, if you purchase the wrong kind of annuity, let's say you, you purchase an annuity to provide guaranteed income. If you purchase the wrong kind and turn it on incorrectly, it goes away if you pass away. And so if you've got annuity income of 2000 a month and it's in, your, you know, it's in my name, let's say, and I pass away, if it's set up incorrectly, it goes away right there. And so the insurance company keeps the rest of the money, kind of wow. like Social Security, right? Yeah. So, it, you know, so we've got to look at the financial situation. I don't want... Um, you know, this this may sound chauvinistic, and I don't mean it to. It's just the way I feel. Um, whenever I work with a couple, I am more concerned about the husband passing away than I am the wife. And the reason I, and this is what I say, I say, you know, I know if I lost a spouse, that I would figure it out. I'd go to the YMCA if I had to. I mean, I'd, I'd rent a trailer. I'd do, you know, I don't, as long as I've got my work and I've got things to do and I've got a good television that can pick up NFL and college football and, and things like that, I'm fine. But I don't want to leave a spouse that way. I want the spouse to maintain. So if we have to choose, we tend to, to, um, go a little heavier on the on the female part of the couple than the male, um, and I hope that doesn't sound chauvinistic. Again, it's just the way I was brought up. It's the way I feel about about couples, and, sure. and of course we talk to the couple and ask them and and that type of thing. No, I, I think I do that typically makes sense. voice that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and and, and and many times the the male might have more work skills. Maybe not. I mean, maybe the female was the breadwinner or, or the more educated one or whatever. Sure. Um, but I I don't want you know a spouse having to go back to work at age seventy five to to make no. up for the lost income. No. I, yeah. And you see that so, happen, and, so and that has happened. So mm-hmm. you really want to plan ahead. And and even if you're not, uh, I think that a lot of people, it's just planning. It's not even how much or how little mm-hmm. they have. If they plan and work with a financial mm-hmm. planner, a financial advisor like yourself, uh, they can not have to worry about that happening, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why, why not get help? Uh, it's not yeah. like... Um, you know, we, you know, that we're unaffordable or something. I mean, we, we are, are charging, uh, you know, typically less than the typical advisor out there charges, yet we're doing all this other planning. We're doing the holistic approach of uh, state planning, tax planning, social security planning, pension maximization. I mean, I could go on for a couple of minutes. Uh, so why not go, you know, I've told this story before, you know, up until I was age 50 years old, I went to a general practitioner doctor. Um, and I usually only went when I got sick. So maybe once every three or four years, right? If that, but then when I turned 50, I began looking for a, um, can I say this, an old age doctor, <laughs> I don't know. but an internal specialist that understood aging, that understood, you know, what happens to the body as, as we had to take care of ourselves better. Um, and, and so they were a specialist. And so that's kind of what you have to do with your, your retirement. You know, I'll ask people when they come and I say, why have you not yet hired a true retirement planner? And some people say, well, I didn't know they existed or uh, I hadn't thought about it or darn, that's a good question or or, I didn't know there was a difference or whatever. But there's a definite difference because I've been both. I started off as as a broker and an investment advisor and then we morphed and developed this firm into a retirement planning firm. So, uh, you know, if you're not talking to you, whoever's helping you about things like uh, survivorship and estate planning, then you don't have a retirement planner. You've got who knows, you know, whatever it is they do. 
Right. And that's that's the key right there. So uh, obviously, let's take a moment here to let our listeners know. I know you have uh, usually a great offer for them. How can they get a hold of you to set up a complimentary consultation on getting a plan like this in place? Yeah, a great place to start is the website. It's masterplanretire.com, masterplanretire.com, um, and it's um, full of information. It actually has a button on the very first page where you can uh, click it, and my, my calendar pops right up. And it will have hopefully some openings on it. At least if you look about two weeks out, it'll have some openings on it. And we basically schedule a either a telephone call or a Zoom meeting. Um, I prefer the Zoom. Uh, I like to see people, and, and hopefully people can see me. Uh, and we just chat. It's a 30, 40-minute chat about uh, where they're at, what their concerns are, what uh, kind of they describe what they want their retirement to look like. And, and, and you know, and then we... we, we um, First of all, try to help them right there. You know what? You know what questions can we answer? And, but when they start bringing up concerns and things, then we start getting to the point. Well, maybe we need to run some reports to see if these concerns are valid, and what needs to be addressed. And so that is also complimentary. So we can run anywhere from six to ten reports that will reveal to us, just like going to a doctor, where we're sick financially. Um, you know, it, it, if a spouse passed away, what would be the effect? If, and, and I've already gone through all these. So, so that's all complimentary. Again, masterplanretire.com. The old-fashioned way is you can certainly give us a phone call, 770-980-9262. And then the third great way is to text the word master plan, all one word, to the number 21,000. And within about five seconds, our information will pop up. And so by scheduling the complimentary consultation, um, you also receive the reports, as we just discussed, a copy of my book, which within by next week will be available electronically as well. So we can just shoot it right to you. Um, and then, um, you know, hopefully between all of that, you will have a good picture of do you need help? What kind of help do you need? And can, is it us that can help you? Yeah, I think that's great. Now, let's talk about the book. Uh, I know you've authored a book. Uh, what's the title of the book, and uh, how can people get a hold of that? I got a couple of ways. Number one, schedule a consultation. We'll, we'll give you a copy of my book, and I'll send it to you in hard copy. Uh, or, uh, again, electronically, it's called The Road Less Traveled, and it's basically turning your retirement uh, concerns into the uh, journey of a lifetime. And uh, it's available on Amazon, too. If you don't want to meet with me, just go to Amazon. I think it's uh, $14.95 or something like that. Uh, just type in, again, Mark Fricks, F-R-I-C-K-S, and that is the only book I currently have there. I have, I'm working on another one. I've also had the opportunity to write the foreword for two more books of colleagues. Um, and so those are books that I give my clients later on in the process as we're covering different information. But, yeah, Amazon's a good place to go. Again, go to the website, and uh, I think there's a link on the website as well to the book. So uh, masterplanretire.com, great place to start. That's awesome, Mark. And I think it's been a great discussion today. Obviously, it's so important to have not only a financial plan in place and a retirement income plan, but a plan for the eventual loss of a spouse. If you should pass away yourself or your spouse, uh, you want to make sure your loved ones are taken care of after you're gone. You don't want to leave them in a bad situation. And I really have enjoyed our discussion today, but we're almost out of time. Give that phone number and web address one more time for our listeners before we go. Sure. 770-980-9262 masterplanretire.com and if you do pull up the video of the show that will be on the screen as well so um, you know that's easy I know it's a little more difficult listening to either radio or podcast as you know Tony where all, all the shows are available on podcast yep they're also all the shows are available on my website uh, what are the podcast channels Tony remind me Spotify yep Google Play Spotify and Apple Apple Podcasts or formerly iTunes very good so. always yeah, all the major, all the number. major podcast uh, uh, spots out there. Most people have yeah. Spotify or Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, so uh, you can find yeah. it on there. Just search Mark Fricks or Retirement Roadmap Radio. 
Well, th- it must be getting out there because I'm uh, we're getting more and more calls from people that say I heard you on the podcast. Yeah, it's so awesome. they are they're finding them. So that's, yep. that's really cool. All right. Well, hey, All that right. does it for today's episode of Retirement Roadmap Radio with our host Mark Fricks. Well, thanks Tony for being with us as well, helping us out. You're always a a great co-host and i appreciate that very much i don't think i say that enough i want to give a shout out to all the frontline workers as we're going through the covid uh, virus uh, um, you know pandemic right now thank you we do appreciate it um, and until next time i uh, just want to remind you to plan well and prosper have a good day everybody